Hey, what's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing good. Um, thought I'd pop on here for a live stream. We've got a uh, a bigger flare that just popped off, and um, so yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, I'll, I'm gonna give you guys just a second to, to file in here a little bit, so I don't have to like go back and uh, repeat myself a bunch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so okay, yeah, we got about a hundred in here today, so uh, so far. Um, we will uh, go ahead and get started then. Um, again, I'm going to try to do all the space weather at the beginning, guys, okay? So, um, obviously, yeah, we're talking about an M M5 class flare, and thanks to everybody in there. So, I'll, I'll talk to you guys and shout you out here a little in a little while. Um, anyway, R2, radio blackout, right? Where did that come from? Well, it came from a flare that was an M5. Um, so this is a significant flare, um, and it is what it is, you know, uh, but what is an R2 radio blackout? What does that mean, right? Uh, before I show you what that means, i tell you what I can do here real quick. Let me, um, just go ahead and get the, um, the space weather scales up here, and, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at what this flare looks like, okay? So that's what this is. I'm going to try to do that too. Give you guys, you know, the meat of the, yeah, of the, at least from the thumbnail, what's in the, the title. Um, I don't even know if I put a title in there, did I? You know what? I don't think I did. <laughs> I didn't. We're going to change that real quick, guys. Okay, hold on. Give me one second. I forgot to put a title up in here. So we're going to do that. M class flare R2 radio. This ain't even gonna be on this. Uh, it may not be on this one. It's not gonna be. Never mind. Um, I'll have to go into the back office and, and change it. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward with it. I'll change the title after the after the stream um well yeah I'll, I'll just do it after the stream so anyway we got an r2 here and um let's go back and look at the yeah, i can't believe i did that anyway so there there you go there's the flare so let's watch it in motion and see what happens here let's go ahead and this uh incoming sunspot group is actually fairly significant okay these are some big sunspots and this one here on the southern part of this grouping here is the one that erupted and that's the one that actually just kind of developed. You see how fast that went? Now, I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing any kind of CME from this. It does look like that some of this stuff did fire on off. Um, but we're going to take a deeper look at that here in just a second. So, um, I'll tell you what I can do. Let's just uh, slow that down. Sorry about that, guys. I mean to uh waste your time there on that and i am sorry about the the title i should i can't believe i did that anyway um so let's just grab the slide bar here let's pause it so you guys can get a better look at this hey what's up daniel so here we go right there okay so let me back it up Now, see, that's th this is a really good way to show you guys that, hey, when we get a flare, it's x-ray, right? This is what we're talking about, x-rays. See how fast that showed up? And then it's you don't even see anything after that, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that those x-rays are moving at the speed of light. Okay, so what, what we're concerned with when those fire off the sun is it takes it about eight minutes to get here. So that's when we experience the radio blackout conditions from the initial flare, right? So what are we what are we concerned with after that? Well, we're concerned whether or not this flare caused an actual CME also, which is plasma erupting off of the sun. So, you know, you kind of get the main event there, and then you get the boom, which actually the main event, if it did produce a big CME, that would probably be more of a big deal than what this... The actual flare part of it is so watch how this 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 is also flaring quite a bit now i was kind of expecting this when i seen this sunspot sunspot group uh kind of pop off here um it started cresting the limb here shortly well it started doing it 
uh, right after my last video I did two days ago. Okay, um, but they were still on the other side. They were kind of uh, occulted by the sun itself. They were over the the edge of the sun or the limb um, to where we couldn't see them. So as they move forward in time, they started to present themselves. And this one on the southern end of this grouping um, actually just, I mean, it really kind of come to life. Um, and we knew, and up here, let me show you this. Let's just go to, uh, let's go back here for a second. And I'll bring this up right here. Um, these, these are, these were pretty stable is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, you got a spot here, a spot there. That is significant in size. These two sunspots and they're, you know, they're, they're sizable. So. Let's go ahead and try to zoom in just a little bit, give you guys a better look at that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just push play here, and we'll let this little short little movie tool roll. You can kind of see how they morph, and they kind of come into their own. So what are we looking for here? Well, we're looking to see if the magnetic uh, polarities of these sunspots are going to start intermingling. What that means is they start to become unstable because when you, know, when you get shorts in like your electricity at home, what happens? You know, you get a big, huge spark and a bam, and hopefully nobody gets hurt, right? Well, when it happens on the sun with the sunspot, you get flaring and you get uh, coronal mass ejections. So that's what that's what we're talking about here. So if these two aren't playing with each other, nothing's going to happen. But once they start to intermingle and the and the um, complexity of it starts to become more and more and more. Um, you will definitely see these things become really, really active, um, and that's the fear. I don't, I, don't even, I don't like using that word fear. Love you, bud. Sorry, guys, real life. Um, anyway, so I don't like to use that word fear, but what I will say here is that we need to pay attention because th these, these sunspots are definitely substantial, and they're starting to take on complex complexities that could produce these bigger flares. Um, they're getting real close to being able to produce X flares. So I'll just say that right now. Um, and so if they keep playing together and they're right here in the front, and if this kind of instability continues, we definitely could see some X flares. I'm not saying that we are. I'm just saying that the possibility is definitely there. And I'm not going to go into the Delta, this, that, and the other. As far as the complexity of the sunspots and what that all means, that takes a lot of explanation. So I'm not going to sit here and throw a bunch of scientific uh, word salad at you that only I'm going to understand. <laughs> um, so that's why I don't do that. But just know when I'm talking about like delta and beta, all these other words that I'm using here, it's in reference to how um, the energy and stuff basically that these sunspots are holding and could, you know, at some level, when it gets so high, if they do flare, you get X flares, um, N flares, all the stuff that I've always talked about here. But that's, I just don't want to go into all that, because that, that would take almost the whole show to kind of explain to you the right way. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Tamit the Scove actually does a really good job of explaining that, too. So go check her out over there. Uh, Tamit the Scove, she's a space weather woman. Um, you know, she's a physicist and in... Yeah, she does space weather. And I've talked about her before. She is uh, definitely, I, I don't know her personally. I've never, ever talked to her. Um, but she's definitely, it's free college. So just go over there. I'm sure you guys could probably just, uh, oh, who knows? Just, uh, you know, type in whatever keywords you want. It's probably going to, she's probably going to have a video on it. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, hey, Caesar, please quit spamming that in the chat, man. Um. I'm I'm just I'm asking just be polite, please, on that. If I could. Um I don't I don't let anybody else spam anything either, so just want you guys to know that. Hey Marie, what's up? So, um, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got an M flare, M5 flare, R2, and um so let's go here and see what we got as far as the the, um, the scales. Uh, 
Let's go here to the radio blackout so you guys can do this too. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll leave this uh, link in the chat for you guys so you guys can go look yourself, okay? Um, I really would, you know, I, I appreciate it when other people do that when I'm watching them too. So I hope you guys appreciate that because I, I would really highly suggest you guys go look for yourself. These are the scales of uh, radio uh, radio storm or radiation storms. Not radiation storms, radio blackouts, sorry. Radiation storms is the solar radiation storm level here. There, right there, okay? And you can come over here and you can check out geomagnetic storms too. So they got all, all three of those. They'll give you the storm levels. Um, but yeah, so R2. This is an R2 radio blackout. It's a moderate, okay? If it gets to a three, that means that's X flare. That's X flare, all right? Um, and, I'll, and I'll kind of bridge into that here in just a second because spaceweather.com did a really good uh, article today going back 21 years to a big X flare that we got hit with. And um, we'll we'll take a look at that here in just a second. But um, what can we expect from our R2? Well, any effects that we had from the radio blackouts has already happened. It's happened and it's probably done. Um, so that's how fast it gets here and it's how fast it affects things. Okay, so you can see uh, high frequency radio, limit, limited blackouts of uh, high frequency radio communications on the sunlit side. Okay, on the day side of Earth. All right, over here where it's dark right now, not going to experience that, okay? Um, loss of radio contact for tens of minutes. Uh, de degradation of low-frequency navigation signals for tens of minutes. They're talking about uh, probably GPS or whatever there. I'm not really sure exactly what the specific uh, navigation system they're they're speaking about here. Um, but I, that's kind of what I would think, um, you know, GPS. And we talk about when we get hit with, with things like this too, geomagnetic storms, we're concerned with like uh, ham radio operators, uh, first responders, those kinds of things. Um, what's good for one isn't necessarily good for the other. So which one do we want to say is good or bad? I don't say either one is good or bad. I just said, hey, this could be an issue for this group of people or this group. So uh, some people use GPS and first responders most most systems first responders will use uh, uh, ham radio operation type of things. Okay, those that kind of equipment. So it it can be affected, and it definitely uh, does need to be uh, spoken about because it this can affect a lot of people. What if you're home and you know, say somebody you loved or you yourself had a like a really bad health issue, like a heart attack or a stroke or something, and you're trying to call an ambulance, and they're not able to really get it here, you know? Can I measure the Schumann resonance? Um, I don't I don't measure it. No, I don't think you can measure that. You can just see how high the frequency is and what frequency it, it, it's, it's uh, resonating at. Um, you know, so that, that's what you look at when you look at the uh, Schumann. But also, guys, there is nothing on this planet... That's going to show you a Schumann resonance that's for planet-wide. Okay? So, when I show you guys Schumann uh, resonance stuff, understand that it's regional at best. It's really local. If you really want to get a good idea of what your Schumann resonance is, you need to get your own uh, equipment. And you actually can do that. And it's really, on the end of financial ends of that, it's really not that expensive. <laughs> um, well, see, that's the thing, Caesar. I, I can tell you what it is for here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. That's a, it's a great question. So thank you for asking that, by the way. Um, let me get the, I need to get my tool up here. Let's see if I can't find it. Um, all right, here it is. I've actually got this one labeled Schumann Resonance Russia. Why does it say that in my thing? Well, that's because this, this tool itself is in Russia. It's in Tomsk, Russia. So as you're looking at this, you you can definitely see where there's nothing really too too much, right? Um, and I don't I don't even like using the word spiking, because what's happening is the intensity just kind of comes up and it starts vibrating or resonating at a different frequency. That's what we're talking about here. Now the intensification of it, that can there's some discussion that can be had had with that, 
but you can change your own Schumann resonance in residence <laughs> resonance in your house in your room that you're in there's lots of youtube channels you can go to that can actually do that um you just go to if you if you're in a bad mood you can go to the these uh youtube channels and you can just click on the video and it'll it'll send out the signal through your tv well it through your volume and it will definitely sit there and it'll change your resonance right there where you're at so yeah well, prayers for you, Carolyn, for sure. Guys, pray for her uh, her daughter, uh, Taylor. Yeah, i seen that in the chat there. Um, you know, if you don't pray, love, you know, send love, good thoughts, whatever you guys do. Um, I'm sure she would appreciate it. But, yeah, so when we look at these, we, gotta, we have to have the understanding that this is very regional. Now, I'm not saying that we can't have a global situation cause our human resonance to move, because it does happen. You know, when we get hit with the CME, it's pretty much going to be global. It's going to change the resonance a little bit. Or a lot. So that's why we talk about it. Um, but there are multiple different tools around the planet. Um, you know, I, I can't remember. Is it Disclosure News? Um, I think they have, they, they show this one. And I think they show one other one too. Um, Verte Albertos, he, he runs a channel. Um, guys, it's, it's Human Resonance is in his title. So go check him out. He goes, he takes a deep dive into that. So please go check that out. Okay. Now, so back to this. Great question, by the way. Um, and by the way, this is NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. This probably will change. This is their forecasting for um, geomagnetic storming. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, they've already forecasted this out. So with us just now getting this flare, if it did produce a CME in, in about two to three days, we could expect that thing to kind of come by us because it is facing us. Um, so there'd be a good chance we could take an impact from it. Now I'm not saying that there was one uh, or a big enough one, but with that happening, I will. I, I'm going to keep an eye on this because on the ninth to the tenth, maybe even into the eleventh, um, I would if it did produce a CME. I would be like, hey, you know, we better take a look at that and see if it's going to be any kind of uh, changing in their forecasting. Um, also, down here, you see these R1, R2? They forecast and they give you a percentage of if they think we're going to have a certain level of flaring. So, like I said, we're at an R2 right now. Um, so we only had a 5% chance of that happening. It happened. So... Um, and what I'm saying is I would look for these percentages to actually go up too, because I do think that these sunspots are changing in complexity. And I, if you, if I zoom in here, I could show you, I'm not going to, cause it's just kind of a, a, a lighter color white in here. Um, you, you can see the complexity changing. They're morphing actually fairly quickly right now. So, and just, just always remember what I say about the sun. The sun can do what it wants, when it wants and how it wants to do it. So no matter what you're forecasting, there's always a possibility of stuff. Hey, Trish, what's up? Glad you're here. So, and just to, on the Schumann resonance thing one more time, um, you know, they they put the res they pump the resonance into uh, underground for uh, coal workers or mine workers if you're working under underground. Um, if you um, if you're lucky enough or if or smart enough or if that's what, so something you wanted to become and you're able to achieve it like an astronaut you get up there in a space uh, spaceship they will for any length of time they're going to pump that resonance to you too and that's the 7.83 hertz level okay um i think that's here yeah so 783 is right here you see this so anything on that line is what they would consider i don't even like to use normal um it <laughs> It's just a resonance that our bi our biologically our bodies are kind of used to, and that's what we. You, if you've ever heard the term space sickness, this is why you get space space sickness. If you go up into outer space for any length of time without experiencing that and having uh, the that hurt level around you, it will affect you mentally and physically. Okay, there's, I mean, at this point, thousands and thousands of papers written on this. Lots of studies done. That's it's not even a question. This does happen, okay? Um, but yeah. 
So, anyway, let me, uh, <laughs> I'll see you, SG. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate you. Okay, so, let's go back here. And again, you know, we got that. So, we can actually look at when the when the flare hit down here on the absorption. The D, the, the D region absorption prediction model here. Um, you can see how it was flaring a little bit all day long. Okay, we were getting some flaring all day long. So let me just grab, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring that up like that. Um, so if I grab this, and you can, you can basically tell where the termination line is. What that means is the, the, the shadow line where it, the, the divisive line between night and day, right? As we rotate, you can see that even on this absorption chart. Now, you're not going to be able to see that if we're not having any x-rays hit us. Okay, this this thing will just be t solid black. But um, let me uh, just move this through, and you'll be able to see this M class flare. It's a it's a significant one, so it's going to do this. Okay. <laughs> now I know it might freak some people out when you see those big red colors. I mean, I get it, right? Um, but please don't be freaked out about this. There's nothing to be freaked out about. Any effects we were going to have from the X-ray have already hit, and they're gone. If this was going to be like a grid down event. I probably wouldn't even have a chance to come out here and tell you. So if I'm here talking to you, nothing to worry about, okay? Now, I might be giving you guys some sort of, you know, please go look at whatever. Um, you know, in a couple of days, we might be getting a CME. That's the kind of stuff that I can come out here and give you a warning on. All right? Um, so just, just know that. <clears throat> but, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Amy. Um, yeah, reach out. I've seen you over on the lifeboat, so reach out to somebody. We'll try to help, okay? We'll at least find somebody that you can talk to, okay? Back at you, Droppa. Whoa. What the heck's going on, man? My phone's going off. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. So, um, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys a different look at this, okay? Because I think it's important to see different uh angstroms of light on this one because you're going to get a different view um so what i'm what this is doing is it's showing you a different part of the light spectrum and that's this is the 131 so watch what this does okay it's going to almost black out on you here it's getting ready to happen here it comes so you'll know it See that? See how it's just so quick? I know it was quick, but watch. I'll just do this. See that? What is that? You guys know? You guys know what that is? That is uh, x-ray just blasting the camera. Okay? So, just so you know. Just so you know, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's definitely a, a, a decent sized flare. And this is why I show you different angstroms of light. So um, what I'll do here is I'll back that off and show you another one. Let's try the, because I want to give you guys a look at all these angstroms because it helps you understand why we look at different angstroms. Because we'll see different things. Obviously, you can see a coronal hole here that you couldn't see on the other one. Um, so watch this right here where this flare happens. You'll see the, the flare happen and a little bit of a, a plasma release there. Right about there. See how unimpressive that was? <laughs> so you see what I mean? So... That's why we look at a lot of different things. So let me, uh, we'll just go to that part. Now, what you're going to see, it's going to flare, and you're going to be able to see the atmosphere of the sun, or the corona of the sun, same thing, um, get disrupted. There's your flare. See how it's moving the, you can actually see the kind of disruption all the way this far. Now, but what I want to say is, guys, this doesn't look like it caused too much of a CME. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't, because I just don't know yet. But it doesn't look to it. 
have caused a huge shock wave across the front of the sun. Okay, there's a little bit of one, but it's not huge. Okay, so let's take a look at the 304. And the 304 will be able to show us plasma. It's ionized helium. It's not really, I, don't, I hate to use that word plasma too there, but it's ionized helium. It's a, it's a specific gas that the 304, see the ionized helium shows up in the 304 spectrum. Okay? Light spectrum. Part of the light spectrum. They could have assigned this thing any color they wanted. They decided to give it this color. So that, that's why that's why it's in this color. Now, judging by what I just seen there real quick, like, um, I'm just going to say it that it doesn't look like it, it did a whole lot of CME action. Because it looks like a lot of that might have got recaptured. Now, I, I do think probably a little bit of it blew off and let me show you what I'm talking about here okay so here's the bigger eruption right there yes it takes like an X pattern but that is not an X, X flare that is just the pattern it takes when we're looking at these things that's how the camera interprets it let me uh let's do that again zoomed in a little bit Why is it doing that? That's stupid. Okay, so let's just do it this way. Okay, so watch right here. See how that's coming back to the sun? It's because I'm going in reverse. All right, see that? So I don't, I just don't think it caused too much of an eruption as far as CME goes. Okay, let me back out of that, and uh, we'll do that again. So we'll go forward this time, and remember, it's right here. There's your flare. Now there's a little bit of plasma getting ejected. Now, but watch. I want, you, I want you guys to watch this. You see that? That's We've seen these a lot, obviously. It's plasma. But watch how it gets sucked back to the surface. See that? It blows off. And then gets sucked right back. So, when I say sucked back, there is gravity involved. But the majority of that is magnetic connection. So, when you have a different polarity... Um, that's how those things travel. It travels on a magnetic connection line. Plasma is a charged gas. Okay? Four states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. The only difference between gas and plasma is that plasma has a charge. That's it. It has a positive and negative. Okay? Um, very simple explanation there. Um... You know, I'm not going to make it too difficult to try to understand, but it doesn't look like it caused a whole, a, a huge CME or anything. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't cause something there, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that, okay? So if we go over here to seeds, we're not going to get a very good look at it, because um, this happens actually UTC time on the 7th, all right? We'll take a look at the 6th here, but we're not going to see nothing. This is um, This is Stereo A. Yeah, you're not going to see nothing there. Stereo A is kind of, it's a satellite. It sits over here. See where my cursor is? It's actually kind of like right here now. <laughs> Here's Earth. Now, this next satellite is Soho, which is this one. Okay, now check that out. There's a sun diver. This, this didn't even see it. Look at that. There's a sun diver. Hey, check her out. There we go. Hey, awesome. <laughs> That's a surprise, for me anyway. That's awesome. You guys got to see me see the, the Sun Diver right at the beginning. I didn't even know that happened. So what we'll do, watch this. Play a little game with it. Watch this. Here we go. Boop. Let's start it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a child. Sorry. <laughs> I just think it's cool. Check it out. Gives you guys actually a good look of, how, of what's going on there. Now, whether or not that makes it to the sun, that's a that's a discussion for people that are smarter than me. But um, it may or may not have. Um, typically, these things when they're sun diving, they call these sun divers. They don't usually make it to the surface. They usually get burnt up way before that. Okay. But that's actually a good capture of a sun diver. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Pretty cool stuff, I have to say. Let's go over here. Um, all right. Yeah. So there we go. Now here's Aurora. Now you're not going to see much here either, guys. There's just nothing going on. Um, geomagnetically, there's nothing going on right now. Okay? Hey, Anna, good to see you. So I'm not going to waste your time showing you guys that stuff because there's just nothing nothing happening. Here's a geoelectric field map. This thing has went quiet too. Okay? Um, it just is what it is. I'm not going to come out here and try to play something up to something that it's not. Um, because there's just nothing going on. That's why I haven't done a video in the past couple days. There hasn't really been a whole lot going on until now. Um, this is our magnetosphere. I'm just going to show you the still shots here. You can see where the magnetic pressure around our planet is low right now. Nothing going on. So, let's take a look at the earthquakes real quick. And I'm only doing this to, just to report to you what's at the earthquakes that are that have happened. I can't give you any insight on why or when or where. Well, I can show you the where, but um, as you can tell here, this is a. I do notice that we've been seeing an uptick in the amount of fives that we've been seeing here. There's one, two. These these are significant quakes. Okay, there's a five. There, there. So I mean, they're happening all over the planet. There's a, there's an overall uptick in intensity, and in um uh numbers hey marsh what's up adam good to see you bud so yeah so that's most definitely yeah there's definitely an uptick now i couldn't you know again i can't really speak too much into the earthquake conversation because i just i just do not have the knowledge of it so i don't want to come out here and say something that's that's wrong um, but what I will say, there is a reason why they invented this tool. Okay? They, they put this tool here because of this. You see this? USGS. They're they're partnering her up here with uh, NOAA. And they're, they've made this, this tool because they're trying to bridge and try to see what space weather's effect on the ability for us to forecast earthquakes. Right? And obviously, guys, I mean... Go to Dutch, go to Ron, go to whoever. These guys are really good at at least being able to tell you, hey, stuff's happening here. <laughs> you know, here's some warnings, here's some watches. And I have to say, I don't know the science behind it, but they're pretty good at it, I have to say. <laughs> and it ain't just those two. There's quite a few people out there that, that are now understanding this at a level that, it's impressive and you know and that's without even getting into the the trouble that they've had with you know that they few of them been trying to be getting silenced and all and, and all that right so even even with that they're still plugging along and so there you have it now this thing has been going off for what two weeks now this thing has been going up and down up and down we and, and what was odd about it i have to say that with like the first half of that, like two weeks ago when it first started, this this particular model, you know, started getting really really intense. Um, there was no space weather, and this model is, if you read it, it tells you what this model's for. Okay, <laughs> it's telling you space weather's effect on our uh, unnatural electrical components. Transformers, our grid, wires, the switch on your wall. I mean, any of that stuff, right? Um, and it's it's 
the, and if you read down here, I'll just read it. The geoelectric field at the surface of the Earth, okay? People think our geoelectric field is just all-encompassing, and it stays the same. It's not. It's not an even thing whatsoever. That's why we can actually, in our magnetic field part of it, we can actually see cracks open up, stuff get through, and it throws all kinds of crazy aurora at us, right? That right there should tell you that there is, there's nothing consistent about it. The South Atlantic Anomaly. It's down here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And a lot of people know what the South Atlantic Anomaly is, but some people don't, okay? So what that is, is it's a magnetic uh, anomaly right here. And it just used to be kind of like right in this area. Well, it's gotten bigger, and it's split into two. And I'm not going to get into this whole conversation right now about how, you know, there's science there that shows that we have more than just two poles. <laughs> we have like four, um, and, you know, two positive, two negative. And, and again, I'm getting into kind of specifics there. In general, yes, we have a north and a south magnetic pole. Okay, and that's why I just stick to that. Trying to go off and trying to explain that detail on what I'm talking about. If I say, hey, we have four different poles. Um, it causes a lot of question, right? And I just simply don't have the time. It would take me so long to try to explain all of that. And I, I can't do that. So, but like what I would say is please go check, check anybody out talking about the South Atlantic anomaly. You guys can just simply Google it. You'll see it. And it's right here. And, uh, you know, the compasses in these areas don't work the same. That should tell you something. We've all heard the stuff about the Bermuda Triangle, right? Amelia Earhart and, you know, planes going down, things coming up missing. Most people think that's because of that there's some sort of magnetic anomaly there that causes that to happen from time to time. Now, we know this is existing, so we know when you go into this area that you have to pay attention, right? But one thing I, uh, one thing I can say, the South Atlantic Anomaly has grown and it has split into two. So there's two separate little anomalies over here. One bigger, one smaller over here. It actually touches both these continents, South America and Africa. It's a pretty big area, guys. And we, you know, and obviously, if you want to talk about the pole flip and on uh, magnetic excursions and all that kind of stuff, you're talking about magnetic north and south moving closer to each other, which, by the way, is a natural thing. Don't anybody think it's unnatural because it's supposed to happen? Um, and that, that's what I'm trying to say. And that's why when we're out here talking about these things, we're trying to make you guys aware of that. So eventually, just like when the sun has a, a sun cycle, that's what it's doing. It's in the midst of a polarity flip. And when you have the termination event, which was actually something just brought up in the past few years by a couple of scientists, the North and South Pole, when they meet, they flip, right? When they meet in the middle, that's called the, that's called the termination event on the sun. They're probably going to call it the same thing here. Because our magnetic north is speeding up and moving closer towards the equator at a faster and faster rate. And the South Pole is doing the same thing. They're trying to come together. That's a natural thing. Grab two magnets if you don't think I'm... <laughs> you put positive and positive against each other and see how, how hard it pushes against each other. If you got positive and negative, what's it going to do? It's going to suck into each other. So it's natural for our north and south pole to try to come together. That's just what it's supposed to do. And it is on a cycle. And there's so many things that we could talk about what, what could come after that. But what I want to say here is that nobody has been here for that. So we, you know, there's a lot of great education and a lot of great people that have researched this out. And I'm telling you guys, you know, it could be really bad. I don't think that it's ever going to be something that we're not going to notice. Okay, just know that something will happen. Um, whether it's going to be the, you know, a complete reset of everything that we're doing. Um, who knows? But it, it would be lapse of any of us to sit here and say that we shouldn't pay attention to this. Or, you know, address this in our own lives by making sure that we're ready for anything that's going to be happening. We don't, we don't need to be doing that. We need to be, you know, hey, you know, these things could possibly happen. Let's make sure that we're ready when it, when it does happen. So we don't have to be afraid of it. We're not afraid of this. 
I'm not at all. Now, if I woke up tomorrow and I had no knowledge of a pole flip, and I turned my TV on, if it still worked, and it said, hey, guys, the poles are flipping. You better go do something about it. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to sit on my couch and freak out. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we talk about these things. It's not about spreading any kind of fear. It's actually trying to take it away. A person will be at their worst and make their worst decisions when they get shock scared. It's what I call shock scared. It's when you don't expect there, something to happen and it happens. You know, take it down to as little as somebody standing around the corner that you don't see and you jump up and you, you know, you're walking and they jump out in front of you and scare you. What kind of decisions do you make in that instance? Well, you go into fight or flight. You're not making any decisions for yourself. Your body's making them for you. So just kind of understand that. And that's why I do that. <laughs> All right, Tommy, I'll call you. We'll figure it out. <laughs> if I could call you, I'm telling you guys, I mean, all these things, and, and, and I'm of the opinion, when we have these things start to take place in these bigger type of uh, events, that I, I think a lot of them are going to happen all at once. It's going to start a chain reaction. It's going to be kind of like dominoes, those kinds of things. Because um, we do know that it affects all these things that I'm talking about. They do affect one another. So, yeah. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, something I will say about, you know, a magnetic excursion or a pole flip there, which essentially is basically the same thing. The same effect's going to happen. We're not going to know the difference right away. It's it, the same stuff. Will, it Basically, they act very similar. It's just the time frames are different. And the way that they do things is a touch different. But we have what we call the equatorial bubble around our planet. And it is there for a few reasons, one of which is our magnetic field. An equatorial bubble is right around our uh, equator region of the, of the planet. The water level's higher. That's just a fact. You guys can go research that out. Um, and it varies how, how high it is, but some, in some places it's a lot. So if we have a magnetic flip or an excursion... Some of the theories are out there, and I actually kind of think that this has a possibility of happening when that when this event happens, is our magnetics will be down for however long, right? So that, that bubble is probably going to release. What happens if that happens? That water's got to go somewhere, guys. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, and just, you guys can dive on that all you want. Um... But those are the things that we talk about, right? And that's why we talk about them. Because we want to be prepared for those kinds of things. Um, you know, whatever that is for you. I don't tell people what to go do or how to go do it. But I do tell people, hey, you need to do something. And, you know, go to the level where you're comfortable. And then go one step further. That's what I do. And and if I am prepping, like, like for instance, like, like food, I will buy stuff. And, I, and I, well, Adam's in here, and Rip's in here, and, and everybody's in here. Uh, as far as, the, you know, people that prep that I know in my own circle. Uh, SG was here a little while ago, too. Um, if I forgot somebody, I apologize. But when I buy prepping, like, food and stuff like that, I try to buy stuff that if nothing happens, I can still eat it. So I'm not, I'm not wasting things, right? Because I know that's where everybody's mind goes. Why do I want to spend money on that if I, you know... This stuff ain't never going to happen. Well, it ain't never going to happen until it doesn't happen, right? Or until it does happen. And uh, so that's just what I would say. Anyway, that's, that's how I live my life, guys. I don't try to push that off on you guys. You guys do what you guys do you, okay? But I do strongly suggest at least researching a little bit of that and getting yourself to that point. Now, um, 21 years ago, we had a severe geomagnetic storm. A lot of people don't even know this, okay? This is... Go over to spaceweather.com and please go give them some love. I put their stuff in my description box every video. Um, I'm going to put it in the live chat here real quick. There is their link. Please go check it out. Oh, crap. What did I do? Okay, here we go. All right. 
21 years ago, obviously, a full Halo CME struck the Earth. You guys see this? All right, you guys hear me talk about Halo, and I'm showing you guys Halos constantly. This is this is an X1 flare that produced a big a big uh, CME. You see this getting what we call snow whiteout conditions. That's actually a radiation storm hitting the camera. Okay, um, I've seen it look worse than this, to where it was almost like completely white. Um, you can see the halo form around here. So if anybody doesn't know what a halo is, that's what a halo is. It's just we're able to see the energy of a CME coming out around the full disc of this occulter. This is an actual disc on the camera. It blocks the main light of the sun. Okay. Now, notice the position of the sunspot where it fired off of. Remember I said you got to have stuff on there they got to start playing together before they will erupt yeah that the radiation reaches the camera fast guys good point uh rip okay um the radiation most definitely does um it can get here in like 20 minutes it's not moving at the speed of light that this part of it anyway the storm part of it so i believe it's protons if i'm correct um when we're talking about radiation stuff like this uh, but it's not x-ray x-ray is basically moving at the speed of light the flare would have already hit and gone probably but this is uh maybe maybe that's the beginning of all the x-rays hitting there's a lot of uh stuff to be involved here but i do know that there's obviously a radiation storm with this one um so those are the three things we look for right the flare the x-rays the radiation storm part of it increase in protons and then you look for geomagnetic activity, which is geomagnetic storming. That's plasma. So all three of it hit the Earth here. All right? Um, yeah. So let's see, see, see here. What's it say? Energetic particles accelerated by shock waves, right, in an approaching storm cloud. So, yeah. I mean, that's what happened, guys. So please go over here and read this article. I'm not going to go too much into it. But check this out. The shock front hit the Earth's magnetic field around 2 a.m. And this is what it made the, the sky look like in Texas. <laughs> so tell me. Tell me that that would be... Would you guys not just, like, be, what the heck is going on? If you walked outside, you especially if you lived in a bigger city, because you got light pollution when you're around in a bigger city, Right? <laughs> so if you go outside and you're able to see something that intense when you've got a whole lot of light pollution around from all the lights that are around you, wow. And something else that probably happens here, I don't see it. That It sparked a G4 class geomagnetic storm. This wasn't even a G5. So, yeah. Man, I, I would have loved to have seen that. But it is what it is, right? So, um, let's go here, I got here, okay, just making sure I showed you guys everything, um, we can take one more look at this flare, oh, I forgot to show you, you guys see this, this is the HP, this is, um, the same thing as the KP, except this is 30 minute increments, instead of 3 hour data plots, the KP is down here, these are 3 hour data plots, I like using the 30 because it gives us a better idea of what's actually happening. A little bit more detail. It's giving us a data point every half hour instead of a data point every three hours. Okay? Um, you can notice, look where we're at right now. We're, we're in the basement, guys. Okay? Why does that even matter? You're probably asking that, too. It matters because when we get our geomagnetic activity gets this low, if it stays this low for 24 hours or even less sometimes, cosmic rays come in easier and what that means is people that especially people that fly closer to the poles or people that fly often pilots look at this stuff because it's like getting an x-ray so they don't encourage people that are pregnant or any of that kind of stuff to fly during these conditions so understand that because the higher you go up in our atmosphere as you're flying the more you're going to be exposed to this stuff and if you go closer to the poles, 
You guys have heard me say I don't know how many times that geomagnetic activity comes into our poles easier, right? So it makes sense that if you're flying high altitude and you're flying higher up towards the poles, you're going to get a bigger dose of this stuff. So, you know, um, take that for what it's worth. Uh, they they do limit pilots and uh, cabin crew like uh, stewardess and, and uh, workers on that plane. They limit the amount of hours that they can be exposed to this kind of stuff, right? And it's not you know because what one of the, what people don't uh, know this is kind of like one of those things that doesn't get said a whole lot that one of the best defenses against radiation is water, water and ice. They're really, really good blockers of uh, radiation. Okay? So, yeah. It's not like you could take a, a wall of water and put around a plane. You know, it'd be just way too heavy. It's just not practical. Um, so that that's one of the reasons why. Because you know, the materials you would have to use to kind of block that x-ray from uh, getting to the passengers and stuff is just way too expensive. And just not practical, to be honest. So... Um, anyway, I thought I'd throw that out there. You got the HP here. Um, not much going on. But if this continues, I'll come on and let you guys know, hey, pay attention to cosmic rays. What are cosmic rays? I get that question quite a bit also. It's just it's space weather, basically, but it doesn't necessarily have to come from the sun. So they, they hit our atmosphere. Our atmosphere actually will split, split the particles or the atoms. The, not the atoms, but it'll split the particles into two different ones or even more. Um, muons, as we, we talk about that one a lot because that one actually is pretty dangerous, the muon part of it. Uh, the, the, um, neurons, when they, when they, uh, hit the planet, they actually will go right on through. Um, uh, and, and something else too, you know, um, your skin is actually a fairly, like for like UV stuff, um, you know, you got to put clothes on to kind of block that. That ain't going to happen with, with these kinds of things, okay? That's not going to help you. So, just so you know. All right. Uh, I do believe that that's probably it. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of you guys' time here. But what I what I will do here, guys, we had an awesome show over here on the Lifeboat, guys. This is uh, my second channel with Tommy. Tommy started the channel. Um, I kind of came on very shortly thereafter, and it's the Lifeboat. Um, anybody dealing with addiction or dealing with, or you just want to learn, if you have a family member, please come over here, okay? Back at you, Major. Back at you. Um, how long have we been going here? About 50 minutes? Okay. So, yeah. So, the space weather part's done. Um, I just want to make sure I tell everybody that because I try to do it all at the beginning. Uh, thanks to everybody that came in. I, I seen Adam in here earlier. Thanks, Adam, for stopping by. Miss V, Marie, Zen Wynn, thanks for coming. Tommy, Leisure. Trish, love you. Linda, good to see you. Miss V, good to see you. Stephanie, what's up? Good to see you. Anna, what's happening? Carol, be the light. I like that name. Vicky, my internet mom. That's my internet mom right there. Got got to know that. She called into our show over here, guys. This is a call-in show, by the way. Um, it's awesome stuff. It really truly is. Um, we, You know, we're growing. We're helping people get help. We really are. Um, we're, we're making a difference in people's lives, and that's important. It's important to me. It's important to a lot of others over there, too. Okay? So, please just come over here and check us out. Um, I would be much appreciated. Uh, you know, you're going to get nothing but love over here. Nobody judges you. If you're drunk, if you're high, we don't kick you out of there. We want you there. How are we going to help you if you're not there? Back at you, Heather. Back at you. Hey, Carol. Michelle. It's just, uh, guys, it's a family. I know we use that word a lot, um, but it's true. It really is. Uh, hey, Rock. Good to see you, bud. But, yeah, so, and and I have to say, guys, you know, there's been a lot of people that's, you know, thrown, thrown a lot of subscribers my direction, and Adam and, Adam and Dex over on, on Marf is no exclusion. They've been one of the biggest ones that's helped me. Um, so I gotta say, hey, you know, shout out to Adam and Dex too. I, I try to shout them out every every show because those of us that are not as big as others, we can't forget those that helped us that are helping us. 
we we assume that everybody knows who they are. That's not always the case. Okay? I would imagine that out of all the people that are listening to me right now, I don't even know what that number is, but if somebody's listening to me, I bet I could there's at least a few of them in there that doesn't know who Marf is. You know? Um so we have to keep doing this thing this for each other. We really do. So, oh, thanks, Leaf. Appreciate you. So here, here's the link to the life boat again. And please go check out Marfugal TV, Marfugal News. Um, you know, guys, and, and, you know, they're just, they're great. This is great stuff, guys. This whole community is awesome. Hey, Angel. What's going on, man? You still holding it down in the Bronx, baby? Heck yeah. Man, I ain't seen you in a minute. Man, yeah, man, that, that just made my night seeing you. I'm telling you. Holding it down in the Bronx, baby. Gotta know that. Hey, Traveler. Gotta love it. Zen win in the hizzy. All right, guys. I am going to go ahead and get off here. Um, Yeah, Birthday's channel, too. Is Birthday in here? Didn't see him earlier. Yep, there he is. Schumer Residence with Birthday. You guys want to know something about that? You need to go over there and listen to him. He is, my gosh, he's so much smarter than me on this one. Way smarter than I am ever going to be. I can promise you that. All I know is that it does affect us physically and mentally. So if you guys want to know the ins and outs of what the human resonance can and can't do and how it's working, go over to his channel, Berte Albertos, and check him out. Human resonance with Berte. I think that's what he's calling his channel now. He's changed it like 12 times, I think. <laughs> human resonance with Berte. I actually like that one better than uh, some of the other ones you picked. But that's, yeah. Anyway. Hey, Lord Andrew, what's up? Good to see you. Okay, guys, I am going to go ahead and cut it here. I appreciate everybody that stopped through. Um, anything else happens, I'll definitely be on here letting you know. We will, 100%, will be paying attention to these sunspots. These are big. They're starting to become complex, so we have to do it. You lose your brother to an overdose, Michelle? That sucks. Please stop over at the lifeboat. Please. Here, I'll drop the link again for you. If you need, if you're struggling with any of that, you know, you just need to talk to somebody, hit us up. Our emails and stuff are in the description over there. Um, you know, we will. Yeah, please. Please do. Hey, VW, good to see you. Drop a deuce. Love the name. Love the name, drop a deuce, number two. <laughs> Love it. Brings a smile to my face every time. Hey, what is that anyway, man? Why is it that when somebody mentions a bodily function like that, that at least every boy or every man in the house is going to be giggling? You know, it just shows our immaturity, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Later, Gators. See ya. <laughs> I don't know. It just shows our, uh, you know, I guess our immaturity. I don't know. Anyway, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves. And, uh, Good night, my internet mother. You can always drink this Kool-Aid. <laughs>